Rwanda, the once war-torn country, went from a 52% exclusion rate in 2008 to being the country with one of the highest financial inclusion rates. Nationally, the government has set up a really conducive uh, structure for addressing financial inclusion. Uh, a few years ago, about 2012, they started uh, what we call Umurenje Sakos, and these are grassroots level uh, financial institutions. They're all over the country within access of um, uh, previously excluded people. Rwanda also regulated microfinance organizations to provide services that commercial banks couldn't. It also used technology to provide innovative products. It's a whole pyramid addressing the needs uh, of society. So as a result, Rwanda has really moved up in terms of financial inclusion because you're addressing it at all levels. You also understand that customers don't stay static they develop, so they move up the chain. They go from SACOs, they go to MFIs, then they go to microfinance banks and end up with commercial banks. Africa still remains largely unbanked due to the lack of infrastructure, but with new technology applications like M-Pesa, there's been a significant increase in new banking accounts. Their future interactions with customers will largely be through digital. What we're seeing are branches that have been very, very popular in the past, now starting to be transformed with more digital technologies inside of them, or indeed customers just abandoning branches because they want to do everything through their laptop, smartphone or uh, tablet. With an uptick of new alternative options to banking, competition is getting tough. We would have prob probably in the past worried about other banks coming after our lunch. We are now looking at some of these payment facilitators, payment companies, uh, some of these entities that have been doing search companies that are able to offer payment uh, intermediary sort of services um, that banks maybe have been very slow to offer to our market base. Experts at the Retail Banking Conference agree that traditional banking methods are just not adequate enough to meet the needs of consumers living in a fast-changing world of technology. Traditional financial institutions will have to look at more ways of using technology in order to provide greater access. Sumitra Nadu, CCTV, Johannesburg.